Okay, uh, welcome back guys. Um, my name is Sham and today we're going to talk about crypto markets and whatnot. I don't need charts for it, it's just hilarious. I want to uh, ask a question. Um, I mean, obviously put your answers in the comment if you want, but obviously I'm going to say it now. Uh, but how many of you know about the story about the boy who cried wolf, right? You know, who kept him crying wolf. It's been translated in many different languages and it's a very old uh, kind of a, a, a analogy that a lot of people give, right? Where, you know, where uh, somebody cries, you know, wolf in some countries, cries um, fox, some countries cries uh, lion, tiger. It doesn't matter where it is, but the story is the same thing, right? where a boy comes along and cries, um, you know, he's a shepherd, right? So he's, he's, he's uh, herding all the sheep or whatnot, but he's obviously not concentrating. And that's the kind of moral of the story, right? He's not concentrating and um, something happens and he comes and he's like, oh, there's a wolf, there's a wolf, there's a wolf. He just doesn't want to do it or whatever, right? So because of his um, kind of uh, misleading attitude, and there's nothing there, so there's absolutely nothing there. He just keeps on crying, wolf, 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 wolf. So people listen to him the first time, they listen to him the third time, I'm uh, sorry, second time, third time, eventually people are like, do you know what, next time he cries, just don't listen to him anymore. You know, it's a very old story, right? It's very ancient. And uh, on the third occasion, nobody listened to him. And on the third occasion, or the fourth occasion, whatever, it was really whatever the animal he was describing, it was actually that. But what happened was, you see, the moral of the story is, is people, when they see something or when they hear something repeatedly, right, and it's nonsensical, eventually people just get immune to it. So talking about crypto market, obviously it's a crazy analogy, right, to put in, but um, talking about the crypto market, um, we are so used to seeing um, big massive dumps right you know some of the guys who have been around for some time I know this this kind of uh, applies so this is a message and kind of a guide for um, some of the new guys who are coming into crypto right um, guys we have seen this so much right it's unbelievable like you know you'll have a day where oh we just gone up 200 billion you know, or a day where we've gone up 100 billion, right? On average, like, you know, just say 100 billion. This is currently, but before we used to like, you know, maybe 40, 50 billion a day on average, right? So we've gone up and then all of a sudden we have a massive dump of the same amount. Oh my God, that's it. Bitcoin's over, crypto's over, everything's over, it's dead. We're so used to it because we see a pattern and the pattern is the moment these dumps happen, there's a frenzy of buying. Some like to just kind of, put a single uh, singular word to it and say, oh, bulls are buying. It's got nothing to do with bulls buying, right? It's got to do with the same people who just sold, right? You know, regardless whether you justify it by calling it profit taking or whatever, ultimately it's pure manipulation, right? So for example, you know, we know that, um, uh, what was it called? Um, uh, BNB, right? I'm gonna give you a nice example of BNB. BNB um, hits the target, $400, boom, it's a psychological target. We hit go all the way up to $414. If some people decided to sell their stash, right? Um, of course it's gonna impact the, the, the uh, thing. So you're selling it on chain, right? So that's the whole argument here, it's like on chain. So when you're selling it on chain, everyone's psychology changes all of a sudden and all of a sudden they're like panicking. Um, but the guy who sold it, he's just sitting with another buyer there, just below it. He's like, right, you know, if I sold it for $400 and if I could pick it up for $380, then I've just made $20 per coin. And what you have to understand is a lot of people get this wrong. The big players do not play with one coin. You know, they're not playing with two coins. So it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to make $40 over two coins. They're not doing that. <laughs> Please understand, right? These guys are playing with hundreds, if not thousands of coins, right? Thousands of coins. So when you multiply $20 over, just for the sake of it, a thousand coins, that's $20,000 you just made from a single sell that you did, right? So... This is what it is, like, you know, so for example, today I got wiped out, um, it was 0 0.58 BTC, so that was, you know, okay, at $58,000, I opened a um, high leverage trade, 16x leverage, and I said, okay, it looks positive, we're going to pump and this and that, and I was about 30% up, actually, funnily, I was about 30% up. 
So, you know, I'm not being greedy. I could have come out if I wanted to, but I, I the market, the charts indicated that we are gonna go and test the uh, the $61,000 again, right? So I'm being confident here. I'm like, okay, 16X, it's not too much. I'm not going all crazy, uh, but I'm only playing with a very small amount. Um, if we hit those numbers, then I'm gonna take half of it out, if not my initial investment out. So my target was that if I can um, double my money um, in a very short period of time, then I'll take my initial out and leave the remainder. And if it goes anywhere, great. Uh, it didn't happen. I got liquidated at 56,000 something um, dollars. I got liquidated, so I got wiped out um, in British pounds. I don't know how many, how much money it was worth in uh, GBP, but in British pounds, it was like close to about 23 and a half thousand pounds, basically. So I just got wiped out 23 and a half K. But I'm not panicking, right? Because the thing is, it's part of the system. Also, one other thing. Now, this is very important. I think I should drop this one in there. So I've just lost 0 0.58 Bitcoin. Oh my God, the world is ending. No, 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 no. See, the thing is, at that time, a lot of people become very emotional. And when you become emotional, you end up doing something what's called a revenge trade. That's the worst thing you could do. Never, ever do a revenge trade. Um, because it's going to burn you, right? Never, ever. When something like this happens, step back, right? Instead of taking one step back, take two steps back, right? Step back and reassess the situation, right? So you have to reassess the situation and say, right, okay, am I going to go in again? If I go in, would I lose? Would I do this? Would I do that? You do all of those kind of thinking to yourself. And uh, I've got a bunch of idiots who are just kind of just pushing in. I don't understand. I mean, clearly animals, right? Um, but anyway, so the idea is, is that um, you reassess, you take two steps back. You say, okay, I've just burnt this money. I've did this. What shall I do? Should I go back in with the trade and put a higher leverage? Or should I go in and put a lower leverage? But should I go in? The question is, should I go in? I'll tell you what I did. I didn't go in. It <laughs> doesn't matter even if I do a low leverage trade now. I know the market's going to go back up again. It doesn't matter. It broke the confidence line. You see, there's a confidence line. It's like when you're trading, you have to understand that these are your support and resistance lines. And if you're hovering around those in a channel, you never trade inside a channel. And for me, I was above the channel and I just entered into the channel again. Because I'm in the channel, now there's no certainty whether we're going to go up or down until we break out of this particular channel. So for us to break out of this channel, I have to be over 58 again. So until I'm back on 58, right, back to square one, I can't actually trade this, if that makes any sense to you. Sorry guys, I just had to do a U-turn because there's a massive, massive accident. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna be traveling through there. I'm gonna do a little diversion and hopefully get to my destination. Um, right, so anyway, let's just do this diversion. So the thing is, is um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so sometimes you just got to stay calm and you got to look for that point because, you know, remember what I say, as a buyer, right, um, I have a complete different fundamental. So I have my rules as a buyer, I will buy at whatever price provided I know the trend is going up. And my ultimate trend that I have, remember it's an 11 year trend that I have and it's a trend line, you've seen it on my charts. That's indicating that we are gonna get to some higher prices in the future. So I've set those dates and in between that, anything I'm buying at any price, so whether I'm buying a very small, you know, 100 pounds worth or a thousand pounds worth, doesn't matter what it is, right? Ultimately, I'm doing what's known as dollar cost averaging. So I'm putting that, stashing it away, forgetting about it. I don't want to know about that money, right? Um, I mean, half the stuff in the float is just different. Obviously, it's like other altcoins and whatever, and there is some Bitcoin, but Bitcoin normally, anything in the float is usually profit. So anything I've taken in profit into BTC, I would use that to do some trades, right? So obviously, I'm trading with my profit, I'm taking a bit of a risk with the thing. and. This is how you should do it. So you should never risk your own money, right? Because remember what I said, whenever you hit that buy button or whenever you hit that, you know, long position or short position, doesn't matter what it is, right? This applies to everybody. The moment you do that psychologically, 
right? Psychologically, you should prepare your brain, your mind to say, I've lost that. That moment, very second, you've lost it. So, you know, but what I was saying, like, you know, the market going down and up and down and this and that. When you see these kind of crazy stuff, is that the one? Yes, that's the one. Uh, so when you see crazy stuff like that, you know, and you see it so many times, um, you become immune to it. Um, so for me, I'm kind of immune to all of these uh, nonsense. Also, somebody else um, should today showed it on a on a thing. There was a coin, T K Y or T T Y O. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, one of those, whatever. And I, I have got some anyway, right? But the point is, is um, that particular uh, coin showing like two and a half thousand percent. Well, it's just launched today. So, of course, there's a massive hype around it. It just launched today. It's an exchange token, right? You know, but give it a day, you know, give it a day. Let it settle down, right? Because pretty much every coin that launches, there's a massive hype around it. And uh, a lot of uh, people, dumb money, um, do get caught out in the hype. And, you know, when you see massive numbers like this, where it's like 2,000%, 3,000%, you want to be part of that just in case, right? Uh, but that's a hype. Um, so I would normally just stay away from them, wouldn't bother. I'll see where it settles because that's where the important part is, right? It's not when it launches, right? It's not if it launches at zero, right? So it could be the other way. It could be it launches at a thousand pounds or it launches at zero. That none of those matter. What matters is, you know, a few days, a month after that, when we have data produced, is the data indicating that we're constantly going to go up or is the data um, indicating that that's a coin that's going to survive? It's not a hype. Is the indicator saying that it's healthy, right? Those are the things we look for because if, if they don't exist on the chart, um, then what is it? What is this coin? Now, obviously, when it comes to uh, exchange offerings, also, if you look at the, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, the small print. A lot of these exchanges, they will say, look, we're doing an exchange offering. We are not taking responsibility. So also they are saying that don't come back to us if this company fails. You're buying at your own risk. Right? Nobody's going to take risk for you. Um, so, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's launched on an exchange. It must be a great project. No, not entirely. It doesn't have to be a great project. A great project is one that survives. You know, so earlier on, somebody asked me a question um, after this bull run ends, would there be some nice uh, cheap gems to pick up? And my answer to that was, of course, there will be. But you have to see who survives, right? Who survives? Um, you know, so, for example, I'll give you a really good one. And this one, I'm going to bring Cardano in, right? Or even Theta, funnily, I'll bring those two in, right? So they're the only ones I can remember right now. Theta, Cardano have distributed all of their tokens. So, you know, every ever, uh, all the coins that could ever exist already exist on the market. You know, would a coin like that fail? No, not entirely. Because remember, uh, the coin itself has already taken, um, like, you know, the company, right? So the company has already taken whatever money it was due to take from the moment of the ICO, number one. And then probably some during um, when they sold, you know, when the market pumps and if they hold any, they probably sold some. But ultimately, the coins are all available on the market. And that's a brilliant thing, right? So when the coins are all available on the market, um, you don't really have to worry too much about it. Um, the market will decide what the price would be, but the coin is not a failure anymore, right? Um, but say, for example, you got a coin, uh, which one? Uh, There's a good one. Uh, let me bring a Filecoin, right? Recently, we did Filecoin. Filecoin is supposed to have 2 billion tokens, I believe it is. Can't remember off the top of my head, right? 2 billion, I believe. But they only have 60 something million or whatever we checked last time um, distributed in the market. Now, a company like that has more chances of failing than a company who has all the tokens out, right? Um, because the public, the people, they decide what price they will pay for it, what they're willing to pay for it. Somebody goes and say someone has a thousand coins and they say, well, I want 10 pence for a coin. If nobody wants it, then it's a rejection, right? But if somebody says, well, I believe in this coin and I'll, I'm willing to pay you 10 pence, then obviously now the coin is worth 10 pence. So another guy comes and says, actually, I want to sell mine for 11 pence. Are you going to pay me 11 pence? And someone says, of course we want to. So the market keeps on going up because the prices are going up, right? Because people are valuing it higher. 
um, you know, but then there's another coin, for example, someone comes and says, well, um, you know, I want 100 and someone says, well, no, sorry, I'm going to put a buy order, I'll buy it if it's only 50. So at some point, the person who wants to sell it for 100 eventually sells it for 50, guess what? Now the coin's worth 50, right? So these are what you have to understand. When coins are totally distributed, the prices uh, are dictated by ourselves. We control the market, right? But when a coin is not, then the con uh, uh, question of survivability comes along. Can this coin survive? Because obviously this project um, is still in the hands of the creators. You know, they still have to mint so many or do whatever. You know, what if they run out of money? What are they going to do? Those are the things you have to understand. But when you've got established companies who have already done all of their funding, they're not raising any more capital. They're not going to sell any more coins to raise any more capitals. They've already raised whatever they were going to, right? And then they're improving on that. That's a different story. Um, so I'm hoping this kind of makes sense, right? So, you know, just because the market goes down and dumps and this and that, or even if we're at the end of the bull market and so many people are calling, oh, we're at the end of the bull market, we're at the end of the bull market, of course it's going to end, right? You know, at some point it's going to be true. The wolf is definitely going to be there. But the point is, is, is it now, you know, and what does it do to you emotionally? So remember, don't be emotional. Um, always uh, well, practice not to be emotional and um, always use logic and reason. Um, you, you'll see it's a, it's a very powerful thing to use, basically, when you use logic and reason. And eventually, I mean, you just become immune to all of these hypes and dumps and all of these nonsense. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to make this any longer. I hope this was uh, informative. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Um, and I will be launching a video regarding uh, crypto.com app as soon as I park up and when I'm free, actually. I'll, around six o'clock, I'll be recording it. But what I'll do is I'll just take a screenshot or like a screen recording of my device and go through the process. So I haven't used crypto.com in a while. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go and I'll have to probably load it up. So I'll load it up with uh, something. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to load it up with something. And then I'll do the whole process. And somebody wanted to know how to send it from crypto.com. Uh, sorry, how to send crypto from crypto.com to Binance, right? So I'll try and make it as easy as possible. And pretty much whatever I'm going to do, is, it applies to all of them. It's the same thing. Unless you want to withdraw into cash, then that's a different process, right? Um, and also you can let me know on the comments of this video if that's something you want to know, how to take out cash. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work. I haven't taken cash in a long time because I know, uh, I think about a year ago or a year and a half ago, the company they used to use for their card services, uh, something happened and some scam or whatever and got taken down by the law, right? Um, so since then, I haven't, uh, I don't know how it works, but I'll try and figure it out and uh, uh, kind of go through with it with you while I'm there. Obviously, I'm going to cover some of my personal details because I don't want anybody to know everything, but I'll cover some of the personal details and I'll release the video. So at least that way, a lot of you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, and hopefully make some sense of it, right? Um, if that's something you want, but in the comments only, because the, normally I'm just like, you know, the initial idea of the video is how to uh, load up, buy a certain amount of crypto. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to send that crypto to Binance. That's it, full stop. I'm, you know, for me, that's it. I'm never going to do anything on crypto anymore because uh, I want everybody to get off crypto.com. It's not worth it. Trust me, it's, it's, it's more, it looks more like a scam every day. Um, so I would get out of that. And um, I'm planning to, uh, well, I'm, I'm asking everybody to go to uh, Binance. Um, so, um, yeah, until that video. So just hold tight uh, and I'll do something. And uh, yeah, um, this accident didn't help. So I'm in a massive, massive traffic jam. But anyway, I'll probably make another video right now regarding something else. Could be anything. Talking about aliens or something. But um, yeah, I'll see you on another one. Take care, guys. Adios.